Welcome to another SUSE demo. Today we will be talking about Edge Image Builder. What is Edge Image Builder or EIB? It's a standalone tool for creating customized SLE microimages. It creates self installing ISO or RAW images. It performs the node configuration through combustion at first boot, including Kubernetes deployment and network configuration even for HA Kubernetes clusters. Long story short, Edge Image Builder needs a SLE micro image configuration files and an image definition, and it builds a ready to deploy image that can be used to deploy multiple nodes. In this demo, we will configure SLE micro 5.5, so keyboard, users, SH access network, custom scripts, etc but also we will deploy and configure K3S 1.28.8 in HA, including host names and networking. EIB will deploy and configure Metal LB and all the pieces involved to make sure that it provides a cloud-like load balances for Kubernetes on bare metal. What you'll be watching on this demo is the EIB folder structure and contents content of custom, network, and Kubernetes folders. Review the EIB configuration file. Use Podman and EIB to build an ISO image. Installation of three bare metal nodes using the ISO image created. Check that K3S cluster is running and responding on the VIP through Metal LB. Last but not least, the output of this demo will end with three NUC machines running SLE Micro and K3S with Metal LB in front of the Kubernetes API, answering all the petitions. Let's begin with the demo. In the first place, we will check the path and structure of Edge Image Builder. At first sight, we notice a base images folder that contain the SLE Micro images that are the base of the ISO image that we will create, a build folder which contains the logs and the detailed information of the ISO building process, a custom folder, a Kubernetes folder, and a network folder with the network configuration for the nodes. Let's check more in depth the content of these folders to understand better how EIB works. In the network folder, there are three files, one per node. In those files, we provide the network configuration for each node based on the MAC address and the host name. The host name has to be the name of the file with the network configuration for a concrete node. When we check the file, we can appreciate the routing, the DNS config, and the interface configuration. Note that in this case, DHCP is being used because the IPs are being assigned by the router using the MAC addresses, whereas in a Kubernetes cluster are static, which also can be configured in this same file. In the Kubernetes folder, we find a server.yaml in which we find some basic configurations for K3S, like the CNI and the Selinux. In this same folder, we could configure values for Helm charts in case we are deploying them. In the custom folder, we can specify scripts that will expand configuration possibilities and files that will be deployed in the nodes. In this case, we have a script that performs extra configurations after K3S is deployed. Notice that the script starts with 80, all the combustion scripts start with a number. The lower the number, the higher priority. So in this case, this script will run last. Now is time to review the EIB definition file in which we will find the OS configuration and the basic Kubernetes configuration. We can see at the beginning of the file, the base image, the output ISO image, time zone, NTP configuration, users and groups, SSH access, activation of the cockpit service for remote management, registration in the customer portal, etc. At the bottom, we find the K3S details, such as the version, 
in this case, 1 to 8.8, the API VIP and the amount of nodes. In this area, it's important to realize that the API VIP is the IP that will be configured in Metal LB as the endpoint for Kubernetes API. Also that there's one node with the label initializer true. This means that that will be the first cluster node to start and where Metal LB will be deployed and the node that rest of the node will use to join the Kubernetes cluster. See that the host names are the same that network configuration files names. Last, we run Podman with the parameters necessary to build the ISO image. We need to wait until it finishes, but in the meanwhile, we will see in the screen all what EIB is configuring based on what we specified in the definition file. Also, it populates an artifact registry that will be used to host any artifact or image necessary to deploy K3S and applications. After this, it starts downloading the K3S scripts and packages for the installation. After a few more configurations, the ISO image is built. We can check in the EIB folder that the ISO image is there. After building the ISO, we will create a USB drive with it and proceed to deploy it to the three bare metal machines that we are using for this demo. Notice that the node installation process has been cut since it doesn't add any value to this demo. After the node one installation, we check that K3S is up and running and that Metal LB and the endpoint copier operator has been deployed and configured in the cluster to start providing load balancing service for K3S. After we deploy the node two, once deployed, we can see the access using cockpit and we check the IP and the host name for node two. Now the cluster has two nodes, so we will connect to another machine, copy the cube config file from node one locally using SCP, change the access IP on it to the API VIP that is now running on Metal LB. We just use VI to edit the file and make the change in the Kubernetes endpoint before creating the local kube config file. we configure and export the local kubeconfig file. Now we have access to the K3S cluster and we can check the pods running on it. Also, we can corroborate that the cluster is working and that has two nodes with the host names defined by us in the definition file at the beginning of the demo. We have node one and node two ready and they're part of the Kubernetes cluster and everything is as we defined. Now it's time to deploy node three and complete the cluster. Again, after installing the third node, we see the IP, the cockpit access and the host name as we defined. From the machine where we configured access to the cluster, we see now that there are three nodes with the correct host names and the K3S version defined by us, providing a compact HA cluster fully functioning in a very short time. We check also that there are pods in, uh, in the three nodes running. This has been all for today. See you in the next demo. Thank you.